Hello and welcome in this session of your course, Pedagogy of Science. I am Dr. Gaurav Singh, your course instructor for the course. And today I am going to talk about a very important concept which you deal at elementary level as well as at secondary level in your class called life processes. Actually, when we teach such type of topics like life process which are equally connected with our lives or the plants which generally learners observe every day. So it is very easy for us to introduce these concepts if we link it with their daily life experiences or their personal experiences. So how can we engage our learners in, with such topics? You can ask them to tell about the processes which are going on in the living beings to keep them alive or grow. You can ask the students to tell what are the important life processes in them and ask them to make a list. You may get a long list like respiration, blood circulation, digestion, excretion, reproduction if they are giving the examples from the human life or the life of the animals and they can give the examples like respiration, transportation, etc. if they are giving the examples from the plant's life because they have already studied about it. So let us start with it. Now you can ask them to prepare a table that for which activity which process is required. So they may be divided into small groups and each group will discuss that what are the processes and what are the activity which are associated with that process. For example, uh, they may write that to transfer a source of energy from outside of the body to the inside. It is a process called nutrition because the source of the energy is sun then how food is made by the plants by using the energy from the sun then how we get the energy from the plants by consum consuming them as a food and how everything takes place. Similarly, uh, they may give you the example of the respiration where acquiring the oxygen from the outside of the body to use the breakdown the food source as per the cellular needs. Then they may talk about the transportation means carrying the food and oxygen from one place to another place. Or they may talk about the excretion also means the base byproduct are removed from the body and discarded outside. This is just an example. They can talk about many processes and they can also enlist the activities which are involved in it. So what I am going to do today, I am going to deal basically with two basic concepts. One concept will be related to human being and one will be related to the animal. Uh, you may do different kind of activities with different topics. So let us start with the nutrition. If you are dealing with the nutrition in the human being, you can start with the questions like what happens to food once it enters to our body? How it gets digested? If there is a system for the digestion, what are the functions of the different organs? Because the student in your class, if you are dealing with this concept at the secondary level, they have already studied about the digestive system organs at elementary level. So, they may give you the names like we have a small intestine, we have a stomach, we have mouth and everything. They may not give you the name of all the organs involved in this uh, activity, but they may give you the organs which they commonly know. So how does digestion take place? It starts in our mouth. They all know when they get food, what they do, they chew the food. So crushing up the food into smaller particles by the teeth then softening the food by adding the saliva to it. Then saliva not only soften the foods, which children will tell you, but you need to add that yes, saliva is basically doing two, three works. Saliva is softening the food so that it goes smoothly in the food canal. And saliva has some enzymes like amylase, which basically breaks the food molecules like starch into sugar. And how do we mix saliva and food? We mix it with the help of the tongue. So you will tell them the functions of the teeth. You will tell them the functions of the salivary glands and enzymes there. And you also tell them the function of the muscular tongue which they have. So if they correlate their daily food or eating experience with this description, they will be able to understand that how digestion starts. Then after that, the food moves from mouth to the stomach through a food pipe called esophagus. They know there is a food pipe which connects the stomach to the 
buccal cavity or the mouth. They may not know that this esophagus has a muscular lining which basically contracts rhythmically and the rhythmic contraction pushes the food from the mouth towards the stomach. So the whole gut has these peristaltic movement and these peristaltic movements basically help movement of the food from mouth to the stomach. Then when we talk about the stomach, they all know that there is a stomach which is an organ in our body and when sometimes they eat more they also feel that it is expanding. So a stomach is a flexible large organ which expands with the food when it enters to it, they know about it. But you need to tell them that the stomach has the muscular walls where digestive juice is coming and digestive juice is being mixed up with the muscular walls. So digestion in the stomach basically taken care by the gastric glands which are present in the walls of the stomach. And what these glands do? These glands basically releases the hydrochloric acid and a protein digesting enzyme called pepsin and mucus, three things. So uh, they may ask why hydrochloric acid because if they have a study in chemistry hydrochloric acid is one of the strong acids. Then you can put something like have you ever feel or anyone in your family has ever feel the acidity problem of acidity. What is that? Acidity means the presence of excess acid in the stomach though it is not required at that time. They may ask why acid is there? Because there is pepsin which basically digest the protein. So to digest the protein we require pepsin and pepsin works in acidic medium. So basically this, added, this acid helps for the pepsin to function properly. And when there is acid, it may react with the muscular walls of the body. It may harm and sometimes it happens. You must have seen the issues of the ulcer and all that. So the mucus which is also there in the stomach, it basically protects the inner lining of the stomach from the acid. So in this way you can introduce the functions of the stomach. Then the food from the stomach moves towards the small intestine and a small intestine is the largest part of the alimentary canal. We all know uh, sometimes it is two or three meters long. Alimentary canal is the place where most of the food is being digested and absorbed. And uh, you can ask your students to explore some interesting facts like what is the length of the alimentary canal or the small intestine. Uh, whether the small intestine is of the same size in all the animals, whether the small intestine of the carnivores is long or short, or they may find the facts like herbivores have the long small intestine, whereas the carnivores have the shorter small intestine because vegetables requires uh, more time for the digestion as compared to the uh, meat. So, how does digestion take place in the small intestine? Because carbohydrate, proteins and fats all are being digested in the small intestine with the help of the secretions of the liver and pancreas. So there are two more associated organs you need to introduce, liver and pancreas. Liver has bile which comes to the small intestine through biliary duct and bile is doing two very important functions. It helps in the digestion of the fat as well as because the food which is coming from the stomach to the intestine is coming with the acid itself. So it is in the acidic medium for pepsin you know acidic medium is required. But for pancreatic enzymes to function the medium should be alkaline. So bile juice basically converts the acidic medium to the alkaline. So if someone is having a problem of the irregular supply of the bile juice he or she may face the acidity because acidic medium may remain in the intestine and they may face pain and all other problems are there. So the fat which is present in the intestine in form of large globules, what they do? Uh, the pancreatic juice basically contains the tryptian like enzymes which digest the protein and lipase for breaking down the emulsified fats and the small intestine walls have the glands which secretes intestinal juice. The enzyme present in the intestinal juice basically convert the protein into amino acids and complex carbohydrates into glucose and fats into fatty acids and glycerols and these are the products amino acids, uh, glucose, glycerols 
which is being absorbed by the intestine and through intestine it reaches to the blood and through blood it reaches to the whole body. So how intestine uh, do this absorption task? Intestine has some you know, finger like structures on the inner lining which are called villi and villi are uh, flexible so they can increase the surface area of the intestine and they are richly supplied with the blood vessels. So whatever villi absorb it directly reaches to the blood and from blood it reaches to everywhere where it can be used for obtaining the energy building up the new tissue or repairing of the old tissue. Whatever remain unabsorbed it is sent to the large intestine where the water is being absorbed by the walls of the large intestine and rest of the material is removed from the body by an anus. So the exit of the base material is regulated by the anal sphincter which basically controls that bed when things should be removed through the anus. So there is a bulb type structure there. How can you facilitate this? This is a very interesting story. I can suggest you three activities. There are very good videos available on the digestive system. Many open educational resources are there, OERs are there. Two links I have already suggested in this video. You can ask your learners to draw the digestive system, label the name of the organs and also write the function of that organs. You can ask them to make a table where they will write that which food item or which food component is being digested in which part of the body, which enzyme works and in which medium it functions. So they can prepare a table also for this. Or you can organize a role play in your class where one student should play the role of one organ and they will learn and study about everything of that organ, that what that organ is, what is its place, what kind of uh, enzyme or juice it secretes, what is the function of that enzyme or juice, when its role comes because there is a sequence in the whole digestive system. So in the same sequence the student come in front of the class and they tell what I do, what I do, what I do, I am a stomach, what I do, I am a small intestine, what I do, I am large intestine, what I do, I am liver, what I do, I am pancreas, what I do. So this can be a very good activity which you can try in your class to help your students to understand this system or this life process. Similarly, there is an important process, uh, life process in the plants called transportation. I thought let me take one example from animals and one example from plants. So that when you deal with the topics related to the life processes, you can also deal in different ways. Like animals, there are many life processes in uh, plants and you can ask your students to enlist the life process in the plants and organs which are involved in it. You can also ask them to try to develop an analogy between the life process of animals and plants. You can ask your students to draw the diagrammatic representation or flow chart of the photosynthesis which they have already studied. And let them explain that what is the role of the photosynthesis and how it works. Now the question is if food is produced during the photosynthesis in the leaves of the plant, how it moves towards the other parts. Why we always say that in all the plant products, the seeds or the fruits are the rich in the vitamins. Why the food get accumulated in different parts of the plants? You can ask them to collect the names or the pictures of the plant and their different organs or the parts where food is get accumulated like in potato it is in a stem, in carrot or in radish it is in root but in many plants it is in fruit. Then how when you fertilize your crop you add fertilizers, you add manures, you basically not sprinkle them on the plant, you basically mix it in the soil. Then how these fertilizers and manure or the elements available there, they reaches nutrients available there reaches from there to every part of the plant. So it means there is some mechanism involved in it which basically transport the food from the leaves to the other parts as well as the raw material like water, fertilizer, manure and minerals from the soil to the leaf. What are the tissues which are involved in plant transport as a system that you need to introduce? How the food move from leaves and raw material from roots? Because they have already studied in their class 9th about the xylem and phloem, they have uh, you know make uh, their, picture, their pictures and diagrams. So they know what are the functions of the xylem and phloem. Now you can ask your students to draw the structure of the xylem and phloem as well. So how xylem functions? Xylem basically 
has some tissues, vessels and tracheoids of the roots, stems and leaves which are interconnected to form a continuous system of the water conducting canals or channels which are reaching to each part of the plant. All the roots cells in contact with the soil actively take up the ions and this create a difference in the concentration of these ions between the roots and soil and water therefore moves into the root from the soil to eliminate this difference. This means that there is a steady movement of the water into root xylem which is creating a column of the water that it steadily pushes upward. However, this pressure of by itself is unlikely to be enough to move the water over the height that we commonly see in the plant. So plant use another strategy to move water into the xylem of bird for the highest point of the plant body. How you can demonstrate it in your class? If you want to introduce the function of the xylem, how will you introduce it? You just take two carrots, fresh carrots, a beaker, butter, red ink and knife. Take the two fresh carrots, cut off their lower tips, place it into the water with the lower tips down containing the red ink. Leave the same setup for at least 2-3 hours. Then you take the carrots out and you cut the carrot horizontally and vertically. Then they will see that the red color is there in the central cylinder of the root of the carrot. It means that at the center there is a tissue system which basically transport the water upwards and that is called xylem. Similarly, when you talk about the transport of the food and other substances, the transport of the soluble products of the photosynthesis is called translocation and it occurs in the part of the vascular tissue known as phloem. Along with the product of the photosynthesis, the phloem also transports amino acids and other substances. Now these substances are specially delivered to the store organ of the roots, fruits and seeds and other growing organs. So the translocation of the food and other substance takes place in the sieve tube with the help of adjacent companion cells both upward and downward direction. And how it has been done, the translocation in the phloem is basically takes place by utilizing the energy and material like sucrose is transferred into the phloem tissue by using the energy from the ATP. This increases the osmotic pressure basically of the tissue causing water to move into it. So the pressure basically moves the material into the phloem to tissue which has less process. This allows the phloem to move material according to the plant needs. For example, in the spring sugar stores in the root or stem tissue would be transported to the buds which need energy to grow. How you can introduce it? You can have any potted plant or a knife. You just gently remove about one centimeter of the superficial part of the stem of this plane containing phloem. Means the part uh, which is basically responsible for conduction of the food. What you can do, you can help your students and uh, don't cut the central cylinder or xylem. You leave the plant for a one week, continue the water as before and observe what is happening. The children will observe that the part of the stem about above the griddled cut is swollen while the lower part has not changed at all. Inferences are that food is not transported below the griddle part, it accumulated above the griddle part, it accumulated above the griddle part. Why? Because it is coming from the leaves but it is not going to the other parts of the body. That is why that part of the stem had swelled. So by organizing many such activities, many such experiences, you can help your students to understand the life processes like transportation involved in plants. It is not about only the transportation or only about the digestion. You can explain the respiration, you can explain the you know blood circulation, you can explain the process of excretion. Many processes are there which you need to explain with the help of different activities, videos, role plays. If you will keep it plain text and lecture method, no one will be able to understand it. So my suggestion is use different types of activities while engaging, while exploring, while explaining, while expanding or enhancing the knowledge and also use different variety of tools for evaluating or assessing the learner's knowledge in a particular concept. So I hope with such examples you will be able to deal with different life processes which are there in the curriculum at the elementary as well as secondary level. Thank you very much.